everyone, it's Jackie from Creative. Um, a little impromptu color pencil party, um, and I'm just out here enjoying some sunshine. I hope you're having a nice day. I'm going to take you step by step through a really fun little drawing. I think I've seen it or I've shown it to you a few times, um, but today I'll take you step by step through it. Um, I'm going to start with just using a 12 pack of col uh, Crayola cra um, colored pencils, but over time I'm going to start introducing some more materials and um, and just kind of take you step by step through the very basics to layering, to using mineral spirits, to using blending. Um, but just to start, we're going to just play with a few different marks and we'll go over that in just a moment. Um, so if you want to join, uh, you can join now. I'm just using a 12 pack of Crayola and I have a few sheets of paper and um, or you can watch this later at another time. Uh, I'm going to show you just a few different techniques and um, and just how I would go about setting up my paper and then we'll get started. So a few things that we're going to need. Um, I'm using, I have a drawing pad and I also have just a few sheets of computer paper just for like testing things out and trying um, you know, if I don't want to put it actually on my artwork, try it out first. Great for test paper. Um, I have a sharpener. I have a eraser. I have a regular pencil. I have some tape. Artist tape works best, but masking tape is great too. I also have, um, I'm going to be using a book to just kind of trace out a rectangle on my paper just to make it a little bit smaller. And I'll show you um, two different versions. One that I used the whole sheet and one that I made like a little... Um, border to it and I think you'll you'll like the border version um, and and that's it so just my few little supplies I'm gonna put you back up and we're just gonna go over a few different techniques and then we'll get started on our drawing all right might be shaky just for one minute I'm sorry I'll move my camera around for you but um, I think that works good for now all right so just a few different things I'm just gonna grab any color just to kind of get warmed up and just do a few little basics and um, like I said I'm just using a very simple box of colored pencils these are just um, Crayola again we'll be doing using different materials over time um, but to get started this is perfect so to start with our, our color pencil, um, I like to kind of play with the amount of pressure that I can put on my color pencil and what I can do with that. So just kind of trying out a very light pressure. And I'm going in one direction and I'm going to go a little bit harder and then harder. So one thing I want to keep in mind when I'm using colored pencils is that um, I want the opportunity to really build up my color, really build up um, layering of different colors and colored pencils are made out of um, wax and oils so uh, they are great for layering but also if you, the paper that we have has a little bit of a tooth to it, right? So it has some bumps and if I smush all those bumps, it's going to make it very hard to layer my colors. So I always start off very light and layer until I have the desired look I'm going for rather than going in right away with a heavy hand. So lightly build up. So I do lots and lots of layers. So it's kind of going to be a little bit um, patient, but we're always patient when we're doing our artwork. Um, so this is just another medium that we have to kind of be patient with and build on, which is really fun. You can really just get lost in it because you can do layers and layers of different colors. Um, let's see. So I have my pressures just to play with and then just like a few different um, strokes I can use with my, my pencil. I can do just like the straight and that straight can go on all different angles, of course. I'm sorry if you can hear the hammer in the background. And then we have like a circular, which is nice for filling in areas. It also can kind of give some texture. So I'm just doing tiny little circles. Um, I also have cross hatching, which I can go in one direction. We're going to be doing using cross hatching in this. And I can go on top of that and slowly build up 
So it's kind of creating like a tic-tac-toe almost and adding some texture. And that would be really great with adding all different kinds of colors and layers. So I am going to get to my piece of paper that I'm going to be using for my artwork. Put this aside because we'll be doing more. We'll be playing with layering and all different kinds of things like that. Um, but I am going to show you a few different ways to make kind of like a border. So in this one here, I definitely have a nice border all the way around. I have another version of this, which I did not use a border. Um, it's nice, but I think it just looks a little bit more finished with the white edge. So you could use your whole paper or you could shrink it down a little bit. So I am going to use just my book. You could totally measure everything out, um, but I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. Now, one other thing you could do is using your tape, artist tape, masking tape, and you can make your border with that. And then when you're done, you peel it off. But one thing, if you're going to be using tape, I highly suggest to use your your jeans, if you have jeans on or just whatever you have on for pants, put it over your knee and just kind of pull up and down a whole bunch of times until you get some um, lint on the back. That's just going to... Um, get rid of a little bit of that stickiness and really keep your paper nice and safe. So if I was going to be using tape, I'd get some lint on it and then I would go ahead and put that tape down. I'm just going to be using an outline and just being mindful of my edges once I get to them when I'm coloring in. But I'm going to use just my pencil and I'm going to go super light because I want this line to go away. You even could do it. I I did mine here with yellow, but I just wanted you to be able to see it, so I'm using my pencil, but you can use pencil too. Alright, so I have my, um, my little rectangle here. I'm using it vertical in this drawing. And like we've done before in our paintings, um, we've used like our hand to really figure out the placement of like in our artwork, right? The, of the vase, are we gonna have enough room for our flowers? Do we want it to have flowers going off the edge of our paper or our little space that we have here? Um, start thinking about that. How do you, where do you want your vase? Do you want anything else on your table? And I'm just gonna put that right there. All right, so I'm going to just use my finger and start with the um, bottom of my jar here. And my bottom of my jar is a really elongated um, oval. And I want to have enough space that I have table showing from the edge of my jar, my table to the bottom here. I don't, I don't, I think it looks like it's balancing if there's no space. So I have about a half inch or so here. Um, but you can make it more or less. Again, it's yours. But I'm going to just really focus way down here and I'm going to work on the length of or the width of my jar. And I'm going to use a light blue. And once I kind of find that width, I'm going to just use my... And I can make kind of sketch marks so I can have multiple lines so it's not like one little line that I have to make sure I'm doing perfectly. Just kind of let go. I'm holding my pencil a little further back and I have a light grip on it. I think the more you kind of relax into your artwork, the more, you know, the subconscious kind of takes over and it's like, I know what I'm doing. I got this. All right. So I have this oval here. So now I know the whole... Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> I have the whole width. I know the width now. So I'm going to just figure out how high I want it. So I'm kind of finding the center of the bottom, moving up, and just thinking about where the opening of the top is going to be. So in this one here, mm, it's maybe just a little bit higher than halfway. Mm -hmm. Maybe the bottom lip here is half. So if I were to focus on about the halfway up, is that right there is going to be my bottom lip then I can do my oval on top so I am going to um, start bringing my sides up now that I know where I want the lower part of my lip lip to be so I'm gonna bring up each side 
just slowly and very, very lightly, like <laughs> very lightly. All right, so now that I have the idea of how wide it's going to be, I can go ahead and add my lip because my or the opening because I know that that's going to be shorter or than the width of the whole jar itself, right? So I know I'm going to go in a little bit so I can make those endpoints. So I'm just going to move in and make some marks. So I have the, the bottom lip and now I have my width. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create kind of like a slight smile or curve. And then I continue that opening of my jar just like that. All right. And you could change your jar up to any kind of jar you'd like. Um, I mean, there's so many different shapes out there. So, you know, whatever you like works perfect. So I'm gonna lightly now add almost like a neck to my bottle here. And now I call these the shoulders of the jar. I'm gonna bring those down and connect. Just like that. All right. Now, on that neck part here, I'm going to add just one little bump out here. That's where the, ca the cap screws on. So I'm going to just lightly just add these little bumps on each side. All right, cool. Now on each part of the bump that we just created, I'm going to add a slight smile or a curve. Bump, top bump, bottom of bump. I'm just kind of fixing my my lid a little bit. All right, and I think I'm going to do one more now that I have that lip of the bump here. I'm just going to do another line right below it. Just kind of touching up my shoulders. And there it is. All right, I think it's cute. Okay, so... Matt, um, that's good for our jar right now. I'm now gonna head back up to my flowers. So I have these really pretty little, um, maybe they're lavender, these little simple lavender flowers. And of course you could add as many um, and all different kinds of flowers you like. I'm gonna slowly start building up my flowers and I am going to um, play with the amount of pressure I'm putting on my pencil when I'm filling them in. The ones that are darker are the ones that are closer in the vase to me. The ones that are a little lighter are the ones behind it. So it's just going to add some depth to um, to my uh, to my jar. So one's going to be closer and one's further away. And it's super simple and it's really fun. So I'm going to start by just grabbing, let's see, mm, I'm just going to use my yellow green um, colored pencil for now. Any green would work, work fine. And I was going to think about how they're kind of laying in my jar. Um, and I'm going to just start adding little stems. And I'm just going to go right through. And these are very light because I am I am um, going to go a little heavier later. Maybe I'll push down a little bit more. Hope you can see okay. It's kind of bright. Okay, so I have one. I'm just thinking of how they're leaning in my jar. And I am gonna have the opportunity to add more later um, to kind of fill in, but I'm just gonna get started. <laughs> um, just get started by adding just a few lines and I can bring them down or I can do that later. I think maybe one more right in here and I'm gonna extend some of them up later as well so I'm gonna keep this green handy and I'm going to find a purple I think it rolled under let's see oh no here it is okay so my flower is made up of just these little bumps that are really simple and I had a lot of fun making these um, and I'm just going to show you one here. So it is made up of just a little bump or shape like that. It would be even cute if you were going to do this and make, um, actually make like hearts 
on it. Um, I think that looks really cute as well, or you could really just do your individual. Um, when I'm adding my little flower petals to the stem here, I don't have to um, go all the way up solid. I can have like one and then skip a little, maybe a couple fell off, um, and it also gives it a little bit more of an organic feel by having um, a few spaces here and there. I always add a top part here and and that's about it so I think they're super fun to do super easy um, and I'm going to just give my pencil a quick little sharpen Oop. Ah. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> my pencil sharpener is broke that's funny okay here we go we got this all right so I'm gonna start by just adding now thinking about down here in the neck that that's thicker and I'm probably not gonna have flowers down there so in that in my stem is going into my jar right so I'm not gonna put some flowers there but I am gonna add one poking out right here and you could fill in as you go or you can add your shapes and then go ahead in and I'm just taking my time this is like super relaxing and definitely something that you could do while watching TV or sitting outside and not having like you know the mess of paint um, which I I do like I do um, I love you know what I also love is watercolor because my watercolors I can just like fold up and I'll show you my watercolor sometime and uh, and it's just such an easy cleanup I know it's kind of funny to say I'm like lazy but you can travel with them too very easily Okay, so I'm just continuing on thinking about, you know, maybe one's behind the other. So just kind of how they would fit in. And just adding these shapes. Maybe one here and then one at the top. Alright, I'm going to start filling these in. Now, maybe you're going to do a heavy hand on these filling in. Or you could do like a medium and then do maybe a red or pink on top of it to um, add a little bit more interest to your color. Um, I'll show a, um, a layered look. So I'm going to maybe do like a medium. Remember, thinking about not flattening the tooth of your paper. I mean, this is pretty smooth, my computer paper, but my drawing pad has definitely has a tooth. Um, so a little bit of texture and that texture is great for building and having like your um, And once you flatten it, it's hard to to overlap and build. Okay, so I Have one color and let's just see what happens when I add Here's a red. So this might be kind of cool Yeah, I think that's really pretty so this is layering adding um, a second color which made it a little bit more intense and that might be pretty for the ones that are closer to us. And then we could do one with um, just the purple. Or again, whatever makes you happy. So I'm just going to continue on. Taking my time. I can, I'm going to go back. Like you could do literally when you're working, you could do like 25 coats <laughs> of layers on just one little spot. So just kind of, I mean, you don't have to, of course, but just have the, you know, the mindset that I, I don't need to just do one. I can go back and layer. And that really starts bringing your artwork, like taking it up a notch. I'm going to go a little bit lighter on this one here. Maybe I'll add a little bit of red to it. I'm gonna just get these down and then we can go back later but I just don't want to spend all this time because you can do this you can add more and more but I don't want you to, to get bored with with me <laughs> so I'll just move on to our jar and everything and then we can go back
I'm going to skip a little one here. Let me add there. All right, and then this guy. So if you weren't here in the very beginning, um, I was just saying that you know, this is just super basic, and I'm using just a 12-pack of Crayola, but over time I'm going to introduce um, some different pencils, some different techniques, maybe even using some mineral sp spirits to help blend. Um, it's just, I'm really enjoying using color pencil. Um, I took kind of a break from them for a little bit, um, but I, I found once I started, I'm like craving them. Um, and there's just so much you can do with them and they're so fun. So I'll share that with you. All right, we'll add some more later, but that's great for now. All right, so let's go ahead and move down to our, um, our jar. So it's glass, I can see through it, but I also wanna show that there's thickness to it and that it you know, has reflection and all that. So. I'm going to be using a light blue pencil. Sun went behind a cloud. Sweater on. All right, so I'm going to kind of focus on my corners where they're overlapping close to each other, right? The glass, um, and that's gonna be like my darkest spots. I also notice that there's like this little like if I were to touch this on the jar, it would. Um, it's like textured and so I added that and it's very simple and I think it made a big difference by adding some thickness to that bottom part here and then of course adding more um, where my glass is a little thicker um, at that top part here. One thing I'm, I thought about is the back lip, I don't really want it to show too much, right? So I made the front lip of the jar darker and let that one just kind of disappear. So to get started, I'm going to just kind of think about um, my curve of my jar. And I'm just going to start adding just some lines here. And I'll do the same thing. It doesn't have to be the same. Let me bring this up. It doesn't have to be the same on both sides. It can, of course, it doesn't have to be because this is kind of just like the, um, you know, the reflection and it's not going to be the same on both so this one maybe is a little bit smaller but I'm just pulling from the edge lifting up and pulling in and I'm going to slowly build that up maybe you just go back and kind of redefine that bottom edge of my jar and then I'm going to do my corners here pulling like slope slightly across same thing over here just a little bit it's like building it up slowly and while I'm here I'm going to decide where I want my water line to be so I'm just going to kind of find a spot here and inside my jar I'm going to create an oval just like I did for the top and the bottom and this is going to be the water's edge <clears throat> all right cool all right and now let's go ahead and add a little bit of a crosshatch so from here I'm going to just go up a little bit and a little bit on this side and maybe kind of curved and the same thing on this side kind of following the shape of my glass All right, and I can also do, so I did curved this way, so the front of the jar, but I'm gonna lightly, just lightly do the curve this way. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna show, so I could do like this kind of shape, right? Just show that my jar has that roundness to it. So it has that back, 
and that front. So just to get a little bit darker, I can show you. Here's a jar. So I can, I'm kind of doing this almost, right? Creating my front of my jar and showing that there's a few, you know, there's the back. But it doesn't have to be that intense because um, it is in the back, so it's out of focus. Okay, so slowly building up. I'm going to add the bottom edge of my jar here. Super simple. And all it is, is going to be straight little lines, evenly spaced. And I'm going to lightly do it in the back edge of that, the bottom of my lightly. And now I'm going to kind of give it a top. So again, another curve or another, another oval. All right, cool. And I'm just going to do lightly kind of shade in straight lines going across that bottom. And I'm just going to darken up the bottom edge. We will be introducing another blue into our um, our glass jar, but just to start, I'm just starting with this one here. All right, so I am going to start kind of building up my... I'm sorry if that's really loud. Um, just building up the front of my vase. And if I need to kind of darken up that back part too, I am going to lightly just go back and forth, just filling in that glass part back there, the inner part of my jar, but really focusing on darkening that back part. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just really define, and this doesn't have to be like solid, so I'm just going to go in, just darken up these here. Again, just going over There we go. All right, so that feels good. So I'm gonna pick up my dark blue. Um, I think it rolled, it rolled away. <laughs> I thought I saw it, where'd it go? I see it. It did roll away. Let me go grab it. Okay. So I have my, my dark blue now. So now I can go in and add a little bit more to my jar. So I'm going to focus on that bottom edge again, maybe on this corner part right here, corner part here, just kind of showing like that's where like the glass is super close together where we're, we're seeing it overlap. So I'm not pushing down total, like all the way, um, because I don't want to flatten the tooth of my paper, but I'm just putting a little bit more pressure on it or just giving another layer. And at the bottom, just focusing on that as well, adding, there, that looked good. So just adding, going slowly, and I can start building up this edge here nice and light same same thing right on top of what we did adding just a few more here and there wherever we want no right or wrong maybe just touching the edge of my water Adding just a few lines in the top of that water. I'm just going to clean up this edge here and 
just touch up here. So, I mean, you could go on and on adding layers. It's kind of like whenever you're happy with where you're at. And also taking breaks and stepping away. I'm just gonna focus right here a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna revisit my um, my stems because now they're kind of disappearing because they were so light. Really thinking about like which ones are in the front are going to be my darkest. So I can even pick up a darker green. This one's just pure green. The other one was like a yellow green. And I'm gonna skip over this part here and I'm gonna go into my jar and I can give it like a little bit of a thickness to the bottom. And I'm just going in, just choosing a few here and there. And just where I want, or which one I want to kind of pull forward. And I can have, I can, this is a great time to add more where I feel as though they are, you know, I need a few more in that jar. And I also could go in and add my different layers if I wanted to. I'm gonna go back to my lime green and get my the rest of those in. And they can be all different lengths as well. I just want them all in the water just so they're all happy. All right, I think that looks good for now. I'm gonna to continue to build up, but let's go and focus on something else for a moment. And that is our tabletop. So of course you can be, it could be outside and this could be like a picnic table with the sky in the background, but mine is going to be like on my kitchen table with the wall behind it. So I have yellow paint and I have a brown table. All right, so I'm gonna start with my brown and I'm gonna find a place on the back, the back edge where I want my, my jar to sit nice and comfortably on my table. So I'm not gonna do it way down here because it's like, I don't want my jar to fall, so I'm just gonna pull it up a little bit. And I'm gonna decide where that is. So I'm gonna say that looks good right here. And if you had tape, you could just go right off of it. If not, just kind of be aware of your edge. Now my back edge here is gonna be through the glass, which is going to, uh, I don't want it to stand out too much, so I'm gonna even light, lift up on that pressure even more. And then when I get over here, I can add a little bit more. All right, so I'm gonna start adding some, um, just going back and forth, filling it in. I am gonna add some more shadow, and I am gonna add a second color, and maybe even some cross hatching to kind of give it a little bit of interest. I'm gonna lightly go right in here, in the bottom of my jar and right at the right underneath my bottom line I'm just gonna add just a little shadow or a little and I can add more later once I go around it so here I go I'm gonna go right underneath and I know I'm gonna be doing lots of layers so I'm just getting it down Again, if you don't have tape, just be mindful of your edge. I can even, I'm gonna bring mine, I'll leave that there. But um, just be mindful of your edge. I'm gonna go through my jar here very lightly. And I'm gonna go on the side here. So if you do use tape, if you have artist tape, that will be great for your paper. If you have masking tape, if you just put the tape over your knee a few times with a pair of jeans on, it will pick up that lint and it will protect your, it will, it will stop your paper from ripping once you take it off. So don't just put the tape directly on um, your paper, definitely add a little lint. All right, so that looks great, but let's take it up a notch. So I'm gonna start adding um, a little bit of a shadow. So my shadow here, I started, it's like an, it's a whole other 
um, oval. So if you check it out here, it's an oval that extends here outside of my bottom of my jar and back up. Do you see that? All right, so I have this bottom edge here. I'm just gonna bring it out a little further. So keep that curve and I'm coming back in. I'm gonna go outside. Do it nice and light and you can build it up. This one's a little bigger, but that's okay. There we go. Okay, cool. So now I'm gonna start and I'm going to um, start filling in my shadow or adding my layer. Let's see if I can do this. Alrighty. Ah, I need a new sharpener. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go in and just add right underneath that lip. I'm going to get a little bit darker or right under the edge here. Just filling in. Maybe adding a little bit of more. Slowly building it up. Step away from your paper. And I'm gonna start adding um, some, a darker edge back here. So it's gonna get darker and a little bit lighter as it comes. So I'm just gonna give another layer here and slowly go down and lighten up. Just kind of give pushing that back edge back. I'm gonna grab my orange and I'm going to start doing um, a different angle. I'm doing this one on a diagonal. Going over that shadow. So again, this would be a great time to add a few more flowers if you wanted to. I can always go back and darken, um, but I'm gonna start my background and I'm gonna work on kind of a, like a starbursty type mark. <laughs> so I'm gonna just kind of work from the edge of my jar and pull out. You could do it all different, you know, of course your background could be in any direction. You could do that circle motion fill in. You could do it all cross hatched. You could do it however you like. I'm gonna do cross hatch, but I'm gonna do the first color is just gonna kind of like glow from my jar out, kind of explode out. And what's great about, or what to keep in mind is that your paper isn't stuck on your table. You can turn it around. So if I needed to, I could turn my whole paper, which I think I will. So I'm just gonna get in there. You can choose to color right over your flowers, or if you wanted to go right or like around them, taking your time, you could do that. Uh, maybe see what happens on the test paper if you added a little yellow to your purple. If it, if it doesn't change too much, then go right over it. So I'm focusing all the way around. If you have a, a piece of paper, you could always put that to cover up your work. Grab something like this and have your hand down just so you're not using, like your hand isn't getting the oils on your paper um, and smudging your work. So it's good to always have like something right there. But um, next time I will. All right. And now I'm just gonna focus a little bit on like where the wall meets my table. I'm just gonna go a little bit darker. I'm going to do the same thing over here. And I'm going to go lightly through my jar where the wall would be. Just lightly. Okay. So now I'm going to add my second color, which is going to be my orange. And I'm going to do like a cross hatch. So I have my lines going this way. So I'm going to go in and kind of go right across. Again, super duper light. I could be doing this with the yellow cross hatching. I just like the orange and yellow, how they mix. I'm gonna 
turn. I'm going to go this way now. Again, see what happens on a test paper if you were to go over your purple. Or you might have to take your time and go through them. And I'm just going to kind of focus down here where my wall meets my table. And maybe lightly through, barely going any pressure on there. Focusing over here. And I can continue to bring that, you know, build that. Go back to my yellow, cross hatch on top of that. And just build that up. I think I'm gonna take another moment and just focus on my flowers for a second and then I'm gonna finish up my jar. Um, and then we'll be done. All right, so I'm gonna sort of focus here and just darken up just a few I think we'll put this one on top I could be doing this with a second color like a fuchsia would be really pretty I think this one we'll put on top And maybe I would add a few more. I also could add maybe there is like like a few little leaves coming off. I could go in and darken any of them. So again, this is like building layers. It's super relaxing. And it's really cool to see by taking your time and adding different layers how it evolves and how it goes from, you know, like a little kid you know, one layer to multiple layers to we can then blend we can do all these fun things so just and you can do it because it's just layering and having fun with it so just add a few more I'm gonna grab my blue and just darken up a few of my lines here So I will be sharing a few other brands. Um, take it up a notch with your color pencils, but color, um, but these are you know a great start. You know if you have them laying around. I mean you can get them at the supermarket. And very inexpensive to just see if you enjoy. So I'm going to do, instead of writing ball, um, I'm going to write love on my jar. You could write whatever you'd like. I would suggest practicing it on a test paper first. And I'm going to do it in my light blue. And then I'm going to give it a um, kind of like a shadow because it's, it's, um, it's a bumped it's bumpy <laughs> so I want to show that it's breeze so I added a little bit of a darker blue outline so I'm gonna write love I'm just gonna kind of use my finger first kind of figure out how I want that to lay and I'm gonna go for it so here we go and come back all right 
that looks good. And I can kind of darken that up. All right, so now I have my other blue and I'm just gonna, on the bottom edge, I'm just gonna go in and kind of give it a darker outline here and there. You don't have to do it everywhere. So maybe start thinking about a title for this piece. So I'll show you where we can sign it. All right. Maybe just touch the front edge of my water one more time. And if I'm, yeah, I think that looks good. So I would go back in, maybe adding a little bit more layers in my flowers. Um, I could push my shadow a little bit more. Maybe back here. If you use pencil, like a regular number two pencil to, um, to do your outline, you could erase that. And then I would give my border because my hand has been kind of dragging on the edge, so I just kind of clean it all up. I'll take that tape off in a moment. I'm just gonna clean up this edge here. All right, so now I'm going to just sign. Um, I'm gonna use my regular pencil again. I'm going to Side my name on the bottom right. And I'm going to put the date over here, which um, I'm gonna check what day it is. It's the 12th. <laughs> and I can write the the name or I can the title that I'd like to add here. Um, let's see, I'll do spring love. All right, and there it is, and it's all ready to go in a frame, or I can just put it right on my wall, but I hope you had fun, and I would just keep going, keep working it, um, add more layers. We'll talk more about blending um, next time, but I hope you had fun. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you all soon.